Welcome to day one of Commit 30 Days of Yoga. Today's flow is all about finding movement. We're going to be twisting, stretching, bending, folding. We're going to be working on releasing tension and on a few basics. Remember the cues that I give in today's video because as this challenge moves on, I'm going to be cueing less for the poses that repeat themselves often. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and to give this video a like and I love reading your comments below. And stick around to the very end where I'm going to break down the movement from today's video. Let's begin sitting in a comfortable, easy position. Hands on your knees as you slow down your breath. Focus on getting long through the back and neck, chest lifted, shoulder blades down and back. Next, hand down to the right, side bend, taking the left arm up and over. Option to lay the full forearm down to deepen the stretch if it feels good. Over to the left side. You can start with the hand down or move on to the forearm. Seated, switch your legs position, bringing the opposite leg to the front. Going into a twist, left hand to right knee, turn to the right looking behind you. Still seated up tall, deepen the twist with each exhale. Keep the back hand close to the body to help you sit up taller. Release and repeat on the opposite side. And release. Transition to a tabletop position, knees stacked under your hips, wrists lined up under shoulders. Spread your fingers wide, fingertips pressing firmly into the mat. Exhale and press down as you round out your back in a cat pose. Inhale, dip the belly in a cow pose. Continue moving through cat-cow, flowing with your breath. Exhale as you round out the back. Inhale as you dip the belly.
Coming to a flat back now, tuck the tailbone and tighten the core, drawing the navel in and up. Let's extend our right arm and left leg, bringing them as parallel to the mat as we can. On an exhale, drawing elbow to knee, rounding out the back like we did in cat pose, and then returning to extension five times. Last one, return to tabletop position, flat back. Extend the opposite side now, left arm, right leg. Reach elbow to knee five times. Exhale coming in, inhale reaching out. Last one, return to tabletop position. Curl your toes under, and with control, lift your hips to a downward facing dog. You can pedal out your heels here if it feels good. Reach that tailbone up high as you press the front of your mat away from you with your hands, stretching out the upper body. Your heels may or may not touch down. What matters more is getting long through the back and reaching the tailbone up. Gazing towards your hands, slowly walk up to the top of your mat to a forward fold, bending the knees as much as you like here. You can hug your elbows and allow the weight of your body to hang down, or keep your hands down on the mat, whatever you like best. If you're hugging your elbows in ragdoll, you might find a little sway from side to side. Now with your hands down, inhale and lift halfway to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to standing, arms up. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Inhale to upward salute, hands and gaze up, small back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart in mountain pose. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold, hands down. Step the feet back to a high plank position. Fingers spread wide, fingertips digging down. With your elbows tucked in firmly at your sides, slowly lower with as much control as possible all the way down to your belly. Line up your elbows beneath your shoulders, forearms down and parallel to each other, palms flat. Get long through the spine and neck, shoulder blades drawing down and back in Sphinx Pose. Keep the legs strong, toes pointing straight back, chest lifted, gaze forward. You can 
stay here in Sphinx Pose or draw the hands back next to the shoulders or chest and press up to a baby cobra, still keeping the back long. Or if you can, straightening the arms to a full cobra pose, chest lifted, shoulders down and back. Aim for a continuous curve in the spine with no sharply curved sections pinching. Wherever you are, lower the chest and press back to a child's pose. Hips over heels, focus on relaxing tension in your lower back. Make your way to a tabletop position, curl the toes under and lift to a downward facing dog. Next you're going to raise the right leg, then step it through up between your hands. Make sure your stance is wide, like your feet are on train tracks, not a tightrope. Get strong through the legs, then lift the arms and body to a crescent lunge pose. The back heel remains lifted, toes pointing forward. Your front knee should be in line with your toes, not turning in, and lined up over the ankle, not beyond it. Plant the back heel and draw it into a narrower stance, back toes slightly turned out, keeping the hips and shoulders square to the front of your mat as much as possible in a warrior one pose. Chest lifted, gaze up if you can. Straighten your front leg and fold, hands down to the mat on either side of the foot to a pyramid pose. Fold over the front leg as much as you can while keeping the leg as straight as you can. A slight bend in the knee if you need to. Bend that front knee and step it back to a down dog. Raise the left leg, then step it through between the hands, rising to a crescent lunge. Lower the back heel, toes turn slightly out, shifting to a warrior one. Check to make sure your front knee is pointing straight ahead and not turning in.
straighten the front leg and fold over in a pyramid pose. Bend the front knee and step it back to downward facing dog. Next we're going to step or hop the feet to the outsides of our hands keeping the hips low in a garland pose. Here your heels may or may not touch down. Reach your tailbone down, raise the chest up high, lengthening the spine and neck as much as you can. Draw the palms together in Anjali Mudra or prayer hands over your heart, pressing the elbows into the inner thighs, deepening the stretch. Gently press the legs back into the arms, creating resistance. Lower to seated and bring the soles of your feet together in a bound angle position. Sit up tall, shoulders down as you hold onto your feet or ankles. If you like, you can slightly lean the body forward to deepen the stretch. Release your legs straight ahead of you in a staff pose. Connect to your sit bones and sit up tall, hands down at your sides. Draw your right knee in towards your chest, hug it with your left arm and twist to the right, gazing behind you. Stay seated up tall, backhand staying close to the body for assistance. Keep the left foot flexed, toes pointing up. Release and repeat the twist on the left side. Release the twist, returning to staff pose, then lower down onto your back with as much control as possible, one vertebrae at a time.
hug your right knee to chest, keeping the left leg extended. If this is hard on your back, you can bend your left leg, pointing the knee up. To a half wind relieving pose, point the left toes and raise the heel reaching long through the leg as you raise your head and shoulders, reaching your nose to knee. Lower with control, slide the left foot up on the mat and place your right ankle across the thigh. Pull the left leg in towards your chest in a reclined pigeon pose. Lower the left foot down and unravel, laying the right leg on the mat. Draw the left knee in this time, pointing the right toes, and raise the right heel as you lift your head and shoulders, reaching knee to nose in a half wind relieving pose. Lower down, slide the right foot up on the mat, place the left foot across the right leg, then draw the right leg into a reclined pigeon pose. Lower the legs and unravel. Then release your legs and arms down to the mat, extending out and taking up space. Palms turned up and open, arms not touching the body. Scan the body from your toes all the way up to the top of your head, releasing any tension you feel along the way as you deepen your breath in Savasana. On an inhale, stretch your arms up overhead as you reach long through the toes, waking up the muscles. Take your time coming back up to a seated position. Break down the movement of stepping through from downward facing dog, bringing the foot forward between the hands. There's a few different ways that we can get there and there are a few things that you can do to make the movement a bit easier. So from downward facing dog, let's start first by not extending the leg and just stepping the foot through between the hands. Now the first thing you want to do is as you come forward, we're going to lean the whole body in and round out the shoulder blades just like when we're in cat pose. You're going to bring your knee as close to your chest as you can and then kick the leg forward, releasing the foot between the hands. So as you come forward, round out the shoulders. You see how I'm coming up onto my tippy toe? 
bring the knee in and kick. Now, I don't know if you noticed that my palm lifted just a little bit, and that's because I'm a little bit shorter in the limbs, and that's actually something that we can do to make it easier. So, I'm stepping the right foot through, either my right hand or both hands can lift through the palms a little bit, just to give me that little extra bit of space that I might need. So watch my hands closely. And there is that little bit of lift. Now, if you're going from here and you find that very difficult, obviously the first thing that you can do is step part way up, grab the foot, bring it forward, palm down. That in itself can be a challenge and it's gonna take practice, but I promise it will get easier with time. Another thing that you can do from here to make it a little bit easier is step that right foot to the outside of the right hand. So stepping here, and then we're gonna shimmy it in, just kind of walk it in and bring the hand to the outside. So I'll do that again. So coming forward just like we did the first time, step to the outside and shimmy it in. And then we're there. Now, from down dog, another way that you can get there is by extending the leg to three-legged dog. And then again, this might give you a little bit more lift and a little bit more momentum to step all the way through. So as I come forward, I often press all the way up onto my fingers and then step. And that's going to give me that space. I need that space here because I'm already resting on my knee. So it's going to be different for everybody, but that's a little tip. Don't be afraid to lift through the palms if it means your foot's going to step all the way through in that one go. So again, and then I can flatten. From here, you can do the same modification that I just showed you without the lift in the leg. You can step to the outside, shimmy it in, or if we're just, just starting out, we're lacking that mobility, but we're gonna get there, you can step part way in and then up. Good. I promise with practice it does get easier and it is such a great feeling when you finally get it. When we're stepping up only part way, we have that visual that we can use to measure our progress with. And that's always super encouraging and a really great tool for self-motivating.